full attention to the return of religions into the public sphere and more generally onto the stage of history. If possible, this process has become even more evident 20 years after the publication of the book that made you famous all over the world. As an observer of contemporary reality, do you have the impression that history has confirmed your diagnosis or are there details of your portrait of the modern world that you would like to change with the benefit of hindsight? In general, I think one can clearly say that the thesis has been confirmed. Uh, but my own study was restricted to the revival of religion, what I call the deprivatization of religion in the uh, Euro-Christian world. I already mentioned the Islamic Revolution in Iran as one of the manifestations of, of this deprivatization. But since then, it's precisely the Islamic revival, which has been you could say the most important aspect geopolitically and in terms of the relevance for the world. But you see the, re the birth of uh, a political Hinduism in India, Sri Lanka, everywhere in China, the, the phenomenon, the religious question is an important question in China today. So everywhere, religion has become a very central and relevant political and public question. Even in Europe, where you do not find a religious revival, religion has returned as a very contested question to European public sphere. So in a certain sense, there is no doubt that religion remains everywhere at the global level a very significant question. However, my main study, uh, a bit to counter the theories of privatization, liberal theories of politics, uh, try to emphasize the positive role of religion in the public sphere. Of course, uh, not all religions play such a positive role. So rather than seeing religion as good or bad, the important question is to analyze in a specific context when does religion play a, let's say, constructive political role and when does it play a negative and destructive political role. From your point of view, what are the most promising signs and the most worrying ones in the current situation? Is there a chance for peaceful religious pluralism or are we destined to live with the latent clash of civilizations also in the years to come? Well, I think that what it has become evident that religion is going to be a factor in the construction of our global order or disorder. And the question is, on the one hand, religions, and not, not religion in the absence, but religions, religious groups, religious movements, can be both the solution to the problem or actually the problem. Namely, interreligious conflicts are part of this process which could be called of globalization of, in, to put in Hegelian terms, master-slave recognition of groups. But this recognition can be either a violent one through, through very violent means or a positive one through really a positive recognition. So we are in the midst of a very, very complex process of recognition, mutual recognition of cultures, religious groups, peoples in our global order. But now it's happening through much disorder. Now, whether, what would be, whether it would be a happy ending or actually a disastrous catastrophe, we don't know, nobody knows. But clearly religion is going to be both a negative aspect of these processes and a positive one insofar as it contributes precisely to interreligious dialogue. Against this background, and as an expert in Latin America, how do you judge the first years of the pontificate of Pope Francis? Is the change he's bringing about as big as it appears at first sight. Yeah, I, think, I think it's big. It's big. Uh, it caught everybody by surprise. It was unexpected. Nobody expected, uh, well, eventually everybody realized there would be a, 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 a pope from outside Europe uh, and from Latin America, but that it would be a Jesuit from Buenos Aires and that this pope would, from the very beginning, adopt such a symbolic performance the choice of the name, Me amo Francisco, uh, the way in which he has 
presented himself to the world, the way in which he was to change the relation of the church to the people. This is a radical change. Uh, long term, it depends whether actually his project of also reforming the internal governance of the church, less curia center, so that the curia does not uh, uh, administer the church, but it's more through this council of cardinals who represent all the regions of the world. And whether this will be possible, we don't know, obviously. Uh, it's a long process, but I think the changes have been very, very significant and it shows itself in the tremendous response that you find among Catholics and non-Catholics to this new opening. Thank you. Thank you very much for answering our questions and welcome to Trenton.